and welcome to our channel. My name is Jade. I'm Matt. And this is Keeping Up With The Kennys. On our channel, we talk a little bit about personal finance, personal development, and our debt-free journey. Mm -hmm. If those things sound interesting to you, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below to follow us on this journey through our lives. In this video, we're going to be talking about sinking funds. Sinking funds what they are, what they entail, what's in them, how one works, yeah. and why you need one. So, without further ado, let's get into this video. So we're, we're talking about sinking funds, and I will go ahead and just describe what that is. It's very simple. It's pretty much a fancy savings account, okay? So a sinking fund is just taking a little bit each month of the money that you're saving and you divvy that up amongst multiple different funds, okay, or accounts for that's allocated to different things. So if you save $1,000 a month, at the end of that year, you'll have $12,000. So instead of just having 12 grand saved, each month you'll divvy up $1,000 maybe amongst, you know, a family vacation for that year. Uh, put some money towards a, a, another car if you guys you know if you guys need a car or maybe landscaping for the house or anything it can be anything and everything and what's good about sinking funds is that it, it allows you not to feel guilty and have worry about large ticket expenses yeah. you know expense items you, you don't have to worry about that which is why they're really good you know a normal savings account everything should blobbed into one account and it's a lot more you have to keep track of. Not a lot of times in life are the, yeah. what's easier, okay? It's less work equals easier, and it does. Less work, it's easier, so have your have your funds. You can sink them into whatever account that you want, mm -hmm. okay? And, you know, if you wanna spend, you know, $2,000 on whatever it may be, and instead of going, well, Jay, you know what? I want dot, 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 but it costs $2,000 right now. Okay, well, let's, we're, we're gonna have to pull $2,000 out of something else that we've allocated to. Yeah. And you don't wanna do that. So, it's if it was Jade, I wanna, ahead. yeah, I wanna spend $2,000 on dot, dot, dot. Okay, so now over the next several months, however how much, okay, well, I'll save $150 or $200, whatever it may be, a month. And then once you get to that savings goal, you got it, and you don't have to feel guilty about, okay, well, now I just spent all this, now I gotta yank it from this other fund. So, it just helps you do that, so. All right, so why you need a sinking fund is pretty much explained by Matt in yeah. the what a sinking fund is. However, why you need one is because it allows for you to plan. So, nothing should ever be a surprise that's what your emergency fund is for. So yeah, the, yeah, yeah. this is a different thing than an emergency fund. An emergency fund is for things that you can't see coming, yeah. like losing your job or getting in a car accident yeah. or, you Unexpected know, something events. exploding in your house or, you know, your kid like trying to microwave some toast and like burning your kitchen down. Like <laughs> Who <things>. microwaves toast? <laughs> My brother when he was two years old. <laughs> so those are things that you can't plan for or i guess he was like four years old but whatever yeah he caught the microwave on fire so you can't plan for that though like you don't know that like your kids are gonna be trying to be so sweet and make breakfast for themselves and then catch stuff on fire so mm. you know these plan for the planable expenses so that's your you know your expected yearly expenses so we pay for our car insurance all at one time it ends up knocking off about a month and a half off of our bill, um, and so we budget for it all year long. Yeah, that's a it's a good point that she hit on. I kind of made it sound like it's more for extracurricular activities, you know, a, a, you know, a new car or you know, a vacation. But this also applies to monthly bills. It applies to yearly expenses. We pay for all that up in front to have a savings. Yeah. So. 
normal bills also will factor in into sinking funds. Not just if you're self-employed, you have your own. You're responsible for your own taxes, so yeah. you should have a sinking fund for that. Nothing like great. these are all, you know, very specific things that yeah. you know are coming every year. A big one that people forget about is like holiday season, so Christmas or That's Hanukkah or whatever, yes. where yes. you're going to be buying a lot of gifts. You should be saving for that all year because yeah. there's no reason that you should freak out come Christmas time and be like, hmm, I didn't save all year for this, but it's okay because Best Buy has a credit card that I can just open up, throw it all on there, and then pay it off over the next, like, you know, three months after yeah. Christmas or whatever. No, January, you should start saving for December for Christmas. And doesn't so have to only say that you know what it is. $25, 35 $50 a month so that you're able to not stress once you get there. Yeah. That's the huge why of sinking funds, is it allows for a stress-free transactions. Yeah. You're not stressing about big purchases, like Matt said, large purchases become just ease. Yeah, you don't but feel guilty also, about it. Also, even unexpected expenses that are expected, unexpected expenses, like car repairs and stuff like that like we yeah. have a sinking fund yeah. for car repairs because you know you're going to have to do that at some but you don't point, know when you don't know when you don't know how much it's going to be yeah. but like matt we both needed breaks pretty close to one another but we had about seven hundred dollars in our sinking fund for our cars yeah. so it wasn't anything that was unexpected or had to come out of our generic savings yeah. it was just taken from that sinking fund and we'll continue to build it up. Yeah, and you kind of know, you know, Ron, if you have your car for a while, what really kind of cost you, you know, I knew how much the brakes and calibers and basic repairs for our cars yeah. were. So we figured, okay, you know, we have 700 bucks, that's fine. That should save us, right? I spent some money on the, those repairs and then <clears throat> we're gonna not gonna need them for a while. So you just slowly build it back up. And then if you hit that goal, allocate that money to somewhere else depending on your life expenses. Um, to uh, say one more thing about mm -hmm. you, you were brought up uh, like at the store and stuff like that. And the, not to say, well, you know, Matt, Jade, we don't know how much I'm gonna spend at Christmas time. That's fine. That doesn't you, change what what the whole point is that, okay, well, I don't know exactly what gives how much is gonna be. That's understandable, but it's, it doesn't matter because if you say, okay, well, January to December, you save up this much money and go, okay, well, I have a thousand dollars for gifts, but you know, everyone's gifts cost $1,200. Well, an extra $200 isn't gonna yeah. make you break you most likely, but doing nothing all year and then come December, you spend $1,200. You're like, oh, yikes, where do my, where am I gonna get $1,200 from? And also, it sticks you into a budget for the holiday season. So yes. if you've saved only $700, that's your budget. So make everyone's gifts fit in that. Yeah. So if you're like, oh, but I really like maybe me, I'm better at this than Matt when it comes to our holiday shopping. Like I yes. set a specific budget for each person and I do not go over it. No matter if I really want to get this person X, Thing and it's $500, well, that's not in my budget for a single person for Christmas ever. So it makes me reevaluate what I get people and where I'm spending my money and all that stuff. So it sets you into a budget for different purchases, just like car repairs. Maybe you don't go to the same repair person every time because some things cost less money at, you know, the little mom and pop shop, but some things they can't do and you're going somewhere else and you're gonna be paying more money there. You know, it it allows for you to get quotes and prices from different places and fit it within the budget that you have. Control, control, control. Just yep. remember, it gives you control so is control. everything. Everyone wants control in their life on every aspect. You want to have control because if you don't, that's where people start derailing. Yeah. So when you have that control. You're solid. You're, you're, you're solid. You're solid on a lot of things that try to try to blindside you in life. So that's that's what this gives you. It gives you control. The last thing we're going to talk about is how. So there are a couple of different ways that you can go about how to the process of a sinking fund. Mm -hmm. So like we said, it is pretty much a savings account. So yeah. at Matt's old bank, that involved opening up multiple accounts yeah. for each individual thing, and then it was 
named each thing. So like vacation, Christmas, savings. Like literally car it was, repairs. you open up an account, savings and checking. If I wanted other funds or accounts to save, I had to checking, savings, another savings account, another savings account, another savings account. It's just, it wasn't a perk that was offered through that bank at that time. And the bank that we bank through now offers the ability of all under pretty much one big account. Yes. You have your check, checking, savings, and then you also have, they don't call it it, but it's pretty sinking much funds. a sinking fund is all it is. It, and they allow you to make goals within it. Yes. Um, which I am going to do an entire video over the Every Dollar app, the PNC app, which is where we bank with now, and just kind of walk you guys through why we love the PNC app um, as far as like the saving goals go and why it's really helpful. But so yeah, you can either do what Matt's old bank allowed for, which was you just open up a lot of different accounts. You can get out an Excel sheet, have all of your sinking funds on there, and then each month you're going to update how like the total amount that's in your savings account and then what's allocated towards each thing. And that's a little bit more work, but if you don't wanna have a million accounts open and you aren't banking somewhere that allows for you to make goals within your account, then that's another option that you have. And when she says more difficult, it's not. It, it's just- More it's work on more your More work, yeah. um, not like dramatically. It's literally, yeah. you go into your account, if you have $20,000 in your sinking funds and it shows you Okay, a thousand dollars is in you know landscape. You have you know twelve thousand dollars in your car fund. You got two thousand dollars in whatever it may be. So and then the next month, if you're putting you know two hundred dollars to one thing, a hundred like you're just tweaking it every month to what each yeah. one would have in it. But if you if you wanna if you wanna see that video, you gotta stay tuned. Don't yep. get too much into that. So um, I'm excited for it. I love the Every Dollar app and it has a really cool way to create sinking funds on there. Yeah. Like we said, our bank has it's free. an amazing budgeting tool on it. It's why we moved everything over there. All right, so I think that wraps up this video. If you got any good useful tips, make sure to hit that like button below and subscribe if you are new here. Yes. Um, subscribe. We hope that we will see you guys next week. I hope you guys have a good week. Cool. Bye. See ya.